Okay, today we're going to start talking about vectors in the plane, and there's some terminology that you need to know. First of all, um, when you're talking about the terminology, they talk about something called an initial point and something called a terminal point. And what you'll notice is whenever they name a vector, you have to name it starting with the initial point. So vector PQ starts with the letter P because that's its initial point. On the exam coming up on Thursday, if you name it the wrong way, it's wrong. So the vector that you see here starts at point P, ends at point Q. You have to name it PQ. Very important. Magnitude means the same thing as length. They're going to denote it with a double line indicator that you see on either side of the PQ vector. So these double lines mean the length of something. The way that you can figure that out is down below in number one, what you'll see is they talk about vector PQ, and they tell us that the P part of this is at two zero, so one, two, zero, so here's P. And the Q is at 5, 3. So 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. And here's my Q. And the vector that they're talking about is the vector that goes from P to Q. Now, if I wanted to find that, there are numerous different ways that you could do that. One way is if you want it, you could draw a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem. But really, we found out earlier that if you're going to be doing this, what ends up happening is you're actually using the distance formula that we learned a long time ago, many times, but we refresh our memory, I think, back in chapter P. Many times. And the distance formula said that we took the x2 minus the x1, <coughs> squared it, and then add that on to the y2 minus the y1, squared, and took the square root. So earlier we were talking about this magnitude is the same thing as length, but we can also write down the word distance because sometimes we will use the distance formula, and that might click more for you when you're thinking about this. As I plug in the numbers from my two points in my vector, I see that I'm going to have this distance is going to be equal to the square root of, and then I have the x2, which is 5, minus the x1, which is 2, square that, the y2, which is 3, minus the y1, which is 0, and square that. And then take the square root of all that. If you do that, you end up with the square root of 18. <coughs> and we know that you probably should simplify that, of course, if you can. So when you simplify the square root of 18, this is really like the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, or in other words, my final answer would be 3 root 2, if I'm going with an exact answer. And if you're not, you can just type it in, and whatever decimal gets kicked out, that's fine. But if on the test they tell you I need an exact answer, that's what they're talking about. Now, something that's really interesting about vectors that was uh, kind of annoying to me when I first started learning about them, is every vector that has the same direction and the same length is the same vector. So you could be in Minnesota and have a vector that is 3 feet long, 20 and 45 degrees, or you could be in Beijing, and it's the same vector no matter where it is, if it's pointing at the same direction and is the same length. That's kind of weird to me. So sometimes, because that's a true statement of what vectors are by definition, it's convenient for us to move the beginning point, the initial point of a vector, to the origin at 0, 0, because then subtraction becomes very easy. So if I were to move the vector that we just got done talking about so that the beginning is at 0, 0, that means that the point that you saw earlier, this 2, 0 point here, is now 0, 0. So 
So 2, 0 is 0, 0. What happened from going from 2, 0 to 0, 0? What happened to the vector? Left 2. So I'm going to write that down as a note to myself so I don't forget. This means that I went to the left 2 units. It's a transformation. So now, when I redraw this thing, bless you, here's what happens. I have my starting point. at 0, 0. So here's my new P at 0, 0. And my new Q, if I move that to the left, two units will be at 3, 3. So I go right 3, up 3. Here's my new Q. It's at 3, 3. Because I move the old Q to the left 2. And my new P, I also moved to the left, too. And so my vector is now going between 0, 0 and 3, 3. So the terminal point, that's what they were asking for, 3, 3. So just a moment ago, I was talking about how it's convenient for us to put the initial point at 0, 0. makes subtraction really easy and all that kind of stuff. If we want to find the length or the magnitude or the distance of a vector. And what they call that is when it's in component form is when your beginning point is actually starting at 0, 0. And there's a technique to do that with. What you do is you just take your terminal point and subtract off your initial point and it'll put it in this component form. So what that means is, as I look at this uh, vector rs, you see that the r starts at a certain location, and the s is at a different location. And if I want to put it in component form, here's what happens. It says I take the terminal minus the initial. So they use these special symbols. They look like this. Instead of using a parentheses, they use this kind of, looks like a less than symbol kind of deal. And the terminal point, how do I know which one's the terminal? Where it ends. So which one's where it ends? S. S, because it came last in the vector name. So I take the x value, negative 5, and I subtract off the r's x value, which is negative 4, and that will be my new x value. Then I do the same for the y values. I take my second y value, negative 8, and subtract off my first y value, which was 9. And what that means when I simplify it is that I get negative 1, comma, negative 17. What this is saying is that I could have drawn a vector from negative 4, 9, to negative 5, negative 8, or I could start at the origin and draw my vector from 0, 0 to negative 1, negative 17, and it's the same exact vector. So now we only have one coordinate looking thing for the vector instead of two to make up the vector. It makes it a simplified way to read it. On your test, when they say put it in component form, which was the whole idea of this thing, component form, that means you have to have these brackety looking things that look like a less than symbol and a greater than symbol. If I don't see those, and it said component form, it's not right. It has to have those, because that indicates to me that it's in component form. One of the benefits for being in component form is that you can do something really easy with the magnitude. So what is rs with the double bars means what's the magnitude, length, the distance? If I were to use the distance formula, okay, I could do this. I could say the distance or the length or the magnitude is the square root of, and then I would have the x2 minus x1, but I started at 0, 0, right? So I really have negative 1 minus 0 squared plus negative 17 minus 0 squared. And we really don't really need to write those square 
are those, pardon me, those zeros in there if we don't want to, because that's kind of a waste of time. But I did it just to show you. So the first one is negative 1 squared, which is 1. Negative 17 squared is 289. Somebody check me on that. I think it's 289. And then that means I have the square root of 290. And so what happens is instead of going through the minus 0, the minus 0, you can actually just take negative 1 squared plus negative 17 squared square root, and you're done. For example, in the very next one, they tell us exactly that. If you look at what they say, they say that when you have something in component form, you can find the magnitude by just taking the first part of your component form vector, squaring it, adding it to the second part, squared, and square rooting it. And that's really what we were doing. So if I were to do that in the next problem and write it without saying the subtract zeros, what I know is that this is the square root of 3 squared plus 7 squared square root. So you just look at the two numbers in the component form of the vector, square them, add them together, square root. So this would be the square root of 9 plus 49, or in other words, the square root of 58. So in the next part, we're going to draw a resulting vector, meaning the end vector. Where do you end up? For example, if I started in the middle of the room and I said, hey, walk to the right three steps, one, two, three, and then turn left and walk forward two steps, one, two. Where I end up compared to where I began, this diagonal is the resulting vector. Okay? So I'm going to show that visually now on the screen. I'm going to color vector u 